in NJPW, and I think that the respect of the culture over there is definitely different than it is in the States, which is okay. You know, it's just different structures for folks. Um, but Okada, uh, Omega was amazing. I liked Okada Naito too, but I feel so bad for Naito, man. Like, when is his break coming? You know, like, it's not coming. It's not right now. So, they were both five star matches. B, elite, B, B, elite. All right, we're done talking about something. Thank you. No problem. When we play the game, or just like in general? When I play the game, yeah, sometimes. But you know what helps sometimes is two things always help. Ignoring them is number one. Ignoring them is easy. Number two is being like, hey, what do you want from me? Do you, are you yelling at me because you are like, why aren't you doing this? Do you want me to go mercy? What, what do you want? Like, go do what they want. And then when it works, be like, hey, are you, can, are you ready? I'm trying to heal you. When I sometimes encounter a troll, I'll switch to Mercy and I'll just heal them, like, ridiculously. And they're like, ah, ah. I'm like, yeah, what? I'm totally on your side. I'm here. I'm here to help. Because you need it. Like, you know. So I like, I like killing toxicity with positivity all the way. I think that's the best way to do it. It's killed with kindness, man. It's an old yeah, saying yeah. for years, you know? And I, um, do you think that it's gotten better? I think it has. Not like in a giant margin, in the sense that there's going to be toxicity on the internet no matter what. We are not going to get rid of that. But I do know that they've made an attempt to clean it up. And recently I can say this, it, everyone takes it so seriously because they like playing the game. You know, it's calm and people get salty because they take it seriously. But I have seen a drop off. And they did say in the video that they have some percentages and there's like less people being reported for toxic behavior. Which means it's happening slowly but surely, you know. Hopefully, these trolls and people like that, we, like they said, we don't want you playing the game. You know, and hopefully just time will weed these people out so that, you know, we'll do that. But I think the best way to combat toxicity is through positive. Nice. No effects. Oh, okay, cool. Thank um, you for the question. So it's super easy to, to look up actors on websites like IMDb and see your whole filmography, whatever you want to call it. Are there any roles you guys work in that people don't generally know, maybe like, a secondary character like a TV show or something like that? Or do you guys strictly stick to voice acting for now? There's some voice acting roles that I haven't announced because they were non-union before I did. Or be, just because like, before I joined SAG, you know. It's the SAG union thing is very interesting because they was on strike for two years. Um, and I'm a proud union member, like we pay our dues and we didn't work for any of the companies who were struck against. So we don't work for companies who are struck against or who do not adhere to SAG style contractual agreements. Now with that being said, a lot of people do do non-union work, because a lot of anime you see, none of that's union. For the most part, a lot of it's non-union. You know, I hate, to, I hate to blow the lid off everything right here. Yeah. Not gonna name any names, but, so it's a tough, it's a tough, it's a tough, it's a tough street, you know? But most of the stuff that I do is union. So I will say that, and if there was anything that I did that was non-union, it was before I joined, or it was with a company that is okay and in good standing with the union. Yeah, pretty much whatever's on IMDb. Yeah, cool. With it. cool. <laughs> yeah, like one of the things is I just did Paladins Terminus in that, which is really cool. And that was a new character, but we did it a while ago, and it just got released. So I was like, okay, when I did it, it was pre-union, but now I'm union, so I don't talk about it. Right? That's kind of what I meant with that, you know. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say troll, um, but I have, if you go on, I play on my Twitch, and if you go and check my Twitch out, there's a net, and like a bunch of YouTubers have made, have been, made some million hit videos off of playing with me, and we've just been messing around talking like Michael Caine, as we play, just, you know, but a few things here. Yeah. All you had to do is blow the bloody doors off. But the world needs now, Bruce, it's not the Batman. It's you. It's <laughs> Stuff like that. You know, for the most part, when I play the game, no one has chat on unless you're in comp, so you gotta go to like comp and quit, like, it's quick pay, bro. <laughs> Four DPS, two healers, let's go. Like, so yeah, I do like messing with people sometimes. I get a lot of the most popular responses, nice voice change you, bro. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know, you wanna hear my after's yeah. prime one? They're like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> 
the Autobots stand by. Like, <laughs> that easily shuts them off, you know? <laughs> Behind you, and then we'll go to you over there. Um, Gameplay-wise? God, he's so spastic. <laughs> Lucky little crazy psychopath, you know? Um, don't get caught in the hallway with Junk Ride, that's all I'm gonna say. He's really tough to kill right now, I've been frustrated. I feel like they like, they put him up there because he's really good damage and he gets played on high, high tier play. But man, he can really get frustrating, you know? But isn't that the magic of all the heroes that they all kind of can get up? Like, Reaper bothers me too, because it's just who I play as. Reaper's always like, yeah. It's always Reaper who's I'm dealing with. I'm always dealing with a Reaper or a Tracer or somebody being so. What do you think of Trump, Brad? <laughs> I think he's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Over there, y'all, and then we'll go over here. Oh, yeah. The weapon, uh, does he, the question was, do we think our weapon suits our character in game? Definitely. Definitely. I think Roadhog would love to have the hook, and I think it fits him perfectly. It's packing his, his ultimate is like when he's ready to go whole hog and he just loads up the cannon with scrap metal and flack. Yeah, I mean, I think, like design-wise, you know, the orbs of discord and orbs of harmony, like, together, like, that's, that's so... It's, so, it's such a cool idea, and I like, and then you know, it, it fits it perfectly, you know, with it's very Zen, it's very Buddhist, yeah, it's, it's very cool. Yeah. And Zenyatta, like, is like the floor is always lava for Zenyatta. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's never standing down. Then Silverwatch is like such like a diverse game as it exposes you to like any other like cultures and like, you appreciate it. I've, you know what? It's definitely me us appreciate everyone and be flattered and honored to be a part of this with you guys. And to see everyone from all shapes and sizes, all colors and races, all creeds, all genders, everyone, you know, is welcome here. You know, there's too much of us versus them in the world, but when we get together in our communities like this, it's just us. And that feels good. And I like that. Yeah, and the, the, the robot community has been very welcoming to me. <laughs> but no, it's, no, it really is. I mean, as far as the diversity in the game and, and in, you know, amongst the fans, it's, it's, it's just a beautiful thing to, to be a part of. We love the union. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Uh, what are your favorite Overwatch League teams? Mm. I gotta go with the SF Shock. Yeah. I'm San Francisco, born and raised, so I, that's my team. Those are my guys. Shock the world. Uh, it's hard for me to like pick a team because I was raised in the Bay and I live in LA, so I'm torn right now between the Shock and like the LA Valiant is kind of who I've been looking at. But um, the Dallas Fuel have reached out to me also and said, what's up? So I'm cool with them. And, you know, honestly, I root for all the teams. But I have been paying attention to the Shock more because they did reach out to us first. So I will say that I definitely have been, like, leaning. And they have some cool, like, Baby Bay and Daz. Those guys got star quality. Yeah, Sinatra. Sinatra. When they, when they He's coming soon. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be they have two players that haven't even got to play because they're turning 18, like, this month or whatever. So, like, yeah. Imagine that, getting our butts kicked by a 17-year-old online. It's terrible. He's like pro. I know. I know. You got a favorite? Do you have a favorite? Uh, I do. The London Spitfire. Spitfire. They just, Good. Uh, they just beat, uh, the Dynasty. Yeah. We were there. Yeah, we were there. We saw it live. And uh, if you guys ever have the chance, go see oh, yeah. it. Go to the arena. It's amazing. I mean, it's a one of a kind, and the tickets are like, like 20, 30 bucks, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I don't. I think they're they're reasonably priced. Um, you get to see all three matches. Yeah. You get to see the whole night. You can see everything you want. They have commissions there, uh, food, drinks. So if you were wondering, you know, you can, uh, they also have merchandise. It's really an amazing experience, and uh, I highly recommend checking it out. So it's it's in Johnny Carson and Jay Leno's stage one. So you're in the like the room where legends were. Going into that studio alone is like yeah. Hollywood royalty. It was really cool. Yeah.
Favorite legendary skin. I love the butcher. Yeah. yeah. And I love the Rudolph one. I mean, that was awesome. I really like Rudolph. Uh, it's got to be the cultist. I mean, it's just like, yeah, it's so, so fun. Good answers. You and the Pokemon shirt. Did you have a question right here? Your turn. You and me? Did you have a question? <laughs> I'll go back to you, don't worry. Galio was great. <laughs> that was really fun. And then we got to do multiple sessions because we got to do regular Galio. Then we got to do Kingkeeper Galio. Seven Circle. Sit down. Wow. He said some really inappropriate things. And so, <laughs> <laughs> the guys at Riot and gals at Riot were really fun to work with. And we went in multiple times. And the coolest part about Galio is that I was, I did that audition and had like three or four callbacks. And something weird happened when they gave me a callback and I didn't get it job like we did the audition and then I did a callback for it, which means you're like this close you know and I did the callback and I never heard anything I was like uh, you know four months later the same audition came through again and I had that notion in my head like I don't want to do this I got denied and they didn't like it the first time but then my other voice acting buddy always said it's the roles you don't care about or the ones you book or the ones you just throw away and nonchalantly do because it sounds real. Like you don't, it sound, really sounds like you don't care. <laughs> so I did it. I did it in a different way. They called me back again. We want to see you for the callback again. I was like, okay. So I went back for another callback. And I go, do you want me to do it the new way? And they're like, no. We want you to do it the original way you did two times ago. We really like that. Let's just work in that vein. I did that for a session. They called me two days later. Okay, we're going with you. And that's how it was. And it was really fun. There, okay, we're back, we're ready, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you feel weird or uncomfortable hearing your voice as a character? The first time it was weird. It was really weird. Because, and it put a big smile on my face, so. It was weird in the best way. When it was like, I can't believe this is real, you know? Like when I went and saw Star Wars, they played an Overwatch commercial, and I was like, I can't believe this is real. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I can't believe that this really happened. And, so it was, it was something I'll never forget. And it was a great moment, no matter how weird it was. It was still great. Um, no, I, for Zenyatta, I, I enjoyed hearing that. It was pretty cool. <laughs> um, plus, unlike other video games, like, he doesn't really have those death sounds. And that's always the weird thing when you hear yourself dying in a game. And so, <laughs> so I don't really have that problem with uh, Zenyatta. Roadhog has like so many death sounds, right? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The moment he gets thrown off the cliff, it's just, Ooh. and I hear it. I'm like, what was I thinking when I did that? Like, I know what the sessions were like, and you obviously can't remember every fine detail. But I'm like, I, I, well done, <laughs> well done. You did the Zenyatta one. That one is hilarious. I did it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Which do do we main with and do we know the way? <laughs> I know the way. Uh, I main. Right now, it's I'm maining. Reinhardt and Moira is fair because I've been doing comp and that's how I climb from like silver to gold because I started rolling Reinhardt and um, so that's who I'm playing right now and I do have most hours played as Roadhog and Farah so it's like Roadhog, Farah, Moira, Reinhardt uh, but I like to say heroes never die, pigs always fly <laughs> I've played once <laughs> With Josh, actually, yeah, and we uh, we played as uh, as each other, and and as you probably know, a Zenyatta versus Roadhog is not a, a good, and so I was not having a good time. <laughs> but uh, but I yeah, I'm always open to playing more, and I, I probably you know would, would like to play with Josh sometime. Fun story. Yeah.
Stay tuned because uh, I did an amazing stream with Gaku Space Genji in December. We raised four thousand dollars for Toys for Tots, and we bought a bunch of kids for uh, actually it was more like close to like almost five thousand dollars worth of toys. Uh, that was amazing, and I think I'm gonna have uh, Feo, and I'm gonna invite some of the other cast in the next month or two to come over and play more of the games. I got the studio in my house set up there. Yeah, let's do it. So it's ready to go. So if you would like to see them play, you can still see that one-on-one -on -one match. It's on Triton Gaming's right. YouTube page. If you YouTube it, you can see it. I hooked him off a cliff. I have. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. And that was like the first thing. The first death he ever had was me hooking him off a cliff. Like, welcome to, and I waved, like, welcome to Overwatch. So, <laughs> we have 10 minutes left. So last couple questions while I'm done. Yes? Um, have you ever played uh, multiple characters in the same game? Have I played multiple characters? Yes. World of Warcraft. <laughs> mug mug over here. Yeah. Um, what do you mean? Just like other video game titles? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's pretty standard because usually you um, voice like a big character and then they'll need like soldier number four or something. So yeah, you'll <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're gonna end up doing, you know, maybe like yeah, two or three voices. It's tough. It's tough for me sometimes because my voice I feel is like a lot of the stuff I've been doing recently is very distinctive, and it's been a, a challenge for me to switch and to do more less distinctive voices to sound more natural backgroundy. You know what I mean? Kind of deal to sound less bravado and more just a normal grunt, you know? <laughs> and so I've been working specifically to try and, you know, not not every character be an orc or, you know, because if you know, Galios like this, Blue dogs like this, you know, so. I've been, I've been, that's been a fun challenge for me is to try and reach out and do more. And I have been successful because this year I booked, uh, the past year, if you've ever heard any Firestone tire commercial, that's been me on YouTube. So whatever you drive, drive Firestone. <laughs> so it's been, uh, it's been wonderful. So out of all the games uh, that you voiced both of you actually, League, WoW, um, Overwatch, is there any character that you just thought, wow, this is really cool, I kind of want to do his voice? Oh, you mean? Like a different character that you didn't do. Oh. Well, when I uh, auditioned for Overwatch, I also had read for Hanzo. Oh. Oh. And I remember seeing the uh, the artwork. I was like, oh, that, you know, he looks really cool. Yeah, I'd love to be that guy. <laughs> and uh, I was probably hoping that I had gotten that. <laughs> but, but Paul Nakuchi does a fantastic job as Hanzo, and he also, you know, speaks Japanese, you know, so it, it probably worked out better. Uh, <laughs> I would have been awful. Um, when I got to do Maxwell Tyrosis, that was a dream come true. That was the character I wanted to play because I read the script and it was like, you get to go to Uther's tomb and you do this whole thing when you get the Ashbringer. That was a big lore junkie. So to do a scene with Uther, was like, oh, gives me chills not thinking about it. That was a big deal, and I was really proud to do that one. You didn't even want to be Uther, you just wanted to be Just wanted to be mad, just wanted to, I knew I couldn't be Uther, because um, I was doing the sessions with like Patrick Seitz, who is the voice of Doomhammer and Monks. I think he is Uther in like his younger form, or Arthas in his human form. And so it was really surreal, and I did the Demon Hunter, Jay Starkweaver also, and Liam, was my vocal coach for that, my vocal director. He was the director who directed that session. So when you have Illidan directing you as a demon hunter, you're like, yes, sir. Like, you know, I'll have it. So, that was fun. Uh, which, character, or which was your favorite voice acting character that you've ever done? Hmm. Roadhog. <laughs> I, you know, just in terms of what you know, it's given us the opportunity to do. I mean, it's gotta be Zenyatta. You know, just getting a chance to meet, you know, you guys and, and you know, all the fans across the world. And, you know, it's, it's a very, you don't get that with every video game no, for sure. You don't. You guys are what makes this special. All of you guys in this room right now are what makes this special for us and uh, what makes this so cool for us. So I want to say thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for coming out to Bakersfield. We really appreciate you guys. Um, you know, this community is very strong and I'm very proud of every single person who's in it for being you, because I got your back wherever you are. Cool. So we'll do one more question and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> no, we can't stop it. five minutes ago.
Yeah. If we do them quick, we can get yeah, multiple yeah, ones. Yeah. We'll get to people we haven't talked to first. What are you first? What's my rank? 2109, right now. He doesn't have a rank because he doesn't play. <laughs> Pizza with or without pineapple? With pineapple and chicken. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll just do pineapple and ham is fine. Okay, yeah. lightning and tongue yeah, with that lightning that's round. Lightning that's round. That's yeah, that's round. That's round. Uh, what, what character do you want to see an animated short for the most? What character do I want to see an animated short for the most? You know, I would like to see the Omnic thing and like more of the Widowmaker sniping thing. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, what is Rohan's nationality? Because uh, one of his skins are like Hawaiian. Or... He's Maori, I want to say. So he's New Zealander. So he, yeah, he is. So he's um, he's Maori based because he has the Islander. But I don't know that for 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 sure. Don't quote me on that because I don't know. But from what I've heard, he may be Maori based. But I don't know for sure. <laughs> Why does Zenyatta wear pants in battle? <laughs> he is the he is the the classiest of Omnics. Yeah, no, he's um, you know he's a, a very modest fellow. And, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know. Well, you know, actually, well, because he is an Omnic, but he is trying to bridge the worlds human and omnic worlds. And I think so I think that's maybe a concession to uh, humanity. Like, you know, okay, you guys wear pants, so uh, maybe I should do that. <laughs> In the back and green. Yellow. 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 Okay. Yeah. Whatever color. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Team Fortress 2, yes, I was aware of that game. What would Roadhog say if he met the heavy from Team Fortress 2? Push off. <laughs> Second question. I'll come back to you. Lightning round. No worries. Sweet. Okay. Last question right here. Is Roadhog ever getting the one-hit KO again? I don't know. You know, he, we had to lose that part of his kit to gain the mobile heal and damage reduction, and he's still playing in top tier, so I'll take it. You know, I'll take it. Hey, Bakersfield, thank you guys so much for coming out. It's been an honor. We want to thank you guys. The Overwatch community is great. Just like the saying says, heroes never die. Woo!